Hello and welcome to this series of reflections. Today, Christ is born, praying with the icon of the Holy Nativity. My name is Brother James and we're here in the chapel of the monastery of the Society of St. John the Evangelist in Cambridge, Massachusetts. We now turn our gaze to perhaps the most familiar part of the Christmas story, the angels and the shepherds. In that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and peace, and on earth peace among those whom he favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about the child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all that they had heard and seen as it had been told them. As I said, this is perhaps the most familiar and best loved part of the Christmas story. And so we find here in the icon, we find that there are usually three areas of the icon that we see angels. We see angels here and here and also down here. First, at the top right, we see angels either directing our attention to the infant Jesus as found in the icon of the baptism of Jesus and other icons, angels are holding towels. You can see over their hands in some icons. These towels over their hands represent reverence for even angels recognize God in Jesus and they have reverence for him. We also have angels on the other side. And there the angels are directing our attention to the shepherds. Then the angel said to them, do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great favor, which will be to all people. So angels not only show reverence, angels also declare good tidings. The shepherds, as we see, are also shown giving praise to God because one of them is playing a pipe, adding human music to the choir of the angels. Then at the top left of the icon, we see the angelic host looking up and giving glory to God. These angels are mentioned in the story of the nativity shortly after the shepherds. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God. So angels worship. They show reverence to God. Angels announce bringing good tidings 
and angels adore. Glory to God in the highest. So as you spend time gazing at these angels, you might want to give voice to what the angels are giving voice to. Spend some time simply praising God for the gift of God's Son. Praise God simply for the gift of God's Son. And adore the infant Jesus in the icon. As you pray with this part of the icon, you, you may want to open your hymn book and find your favorite Christmas carol. Oh, come, let us adore him. Oh, come, let us adore him. Oh, come, let us adore him. Christ the Lord. As you gaze at the angels, you may want to sing your praise to God. You might also want to spend some time just gazing at the shepherds. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. As you gaze at the shepherds, you might want to reflect on your own life. Who has been the messenger of good news to you? Who has been the messenger of God's good news to you? Who are the angels in your life? Spend some time in your prayer giving thanks for the angels in your life. You might also want to think about those people in your life who, who need encouragement, who need a word of good news, who need a word of love. You might want to spend some time in your prayer as you gaze at the angels, thinking who you need to be an angel to, who you need to bring the good tidings of God's love to. Spend some time simply glorifying God with the angels. But spend some time also thinking about who you can be an angel to and bring the word of God's love to them. In your prayer, you might also want to spend some time just putting into your own words what the birth of Jesus means to you. Put into your own words what the birth of Jesus means to you. If you can't, that's okay. Because sometimes before the mystery of God, all that we can do is be silent. You may simply want to be silent before the icon. Word by Madeline Lengel. I who live by words am wordless when I try my words in prayer. All language turns to silence. Prayer will take my words and then reveal their emptiness. The stilled voice learns to hold its peace, to listen with the heart, to silence that is joy 
is adoration. The self is shattered, all words torn apart. In this strange patterned time of contemplation that in time breaks time, breaks words, breaks me. And then in silence leaves me healed and mended. I leave, return to language, for I see through words, even when all words are ended. I, who live by words, am wordless when I turn me to the word to pray. Amen.
joining our prayers and praises with all the angelic host, let us pray, saying, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen.